Phones. The positives are huge. It's small so you can carry it everywhere. You can be spontaneous. It's easy to use, quick to upload because it's always online. And you can shoot and edit on a phone to a basic level and stream it straight to your channel. It can also be a phone. And everything is in focus, always. So why don't we film on a phone all the time? Well, for starters, because everything is in focus, always. Number one, focus. From a storytelling perspective, you can keep certain things out of focus that is not part of the narrative. At its simplest, this means that backgrounds can't be separated from their subjects. You might not think this is a big deal till you realize that audiences will subconsciously zero in on the information that is in focus and make of secondary importance the information that isn't. I think you can guess what happens if everything is in focus, right? Although there are lenses that attach to phones like Moment, none of them can create the shallow depth of field look I'm talking about here. So they're all for wide angle macro and zoom shots. There's plenty of reviews on them out there and we're not covering them just now, but that can add to the storytelling capabilities of a phone, no doubt, but they can't give you soft focus. Number two, storage. Although the storage can be pretty big, there's nothing worse than running out of space while you're filming. You can't just pop another card in and keep shooting though. Not a big deal really for one video but certainly a consideration if your phone is your dedicated camera. Keep in mind, there will be a lot of footage to manage. Number three, exposure issues. Without boring you with terms like dynamic range, overexposure is a constant limitation with a phone. So you either need to limit the shots to ones without windows in the background, which you ought to do anyway, or you'll need to shoot only during certain times of the day to lessen the effect of overexposure. Phones are particularly good at automatically changing their exposure when going from bright to low light, like outside to inside, but really bad at dealing with extremes of light in the same frame at the same time. So don't expect it to handle a human talking to camera with the sun in the background. Either the person will be a silhouette or the phone will expose for the subject and make the background an explosion of white. That brings us to the dedicated video camera. It's a bit unfair on the humble smartphone, but uh, we're going to compare it to the Canon C100. Apart from the ProSound plugins and the ND filters, the C100 is the equivalent of a high-end DSLR with changeable manual or automatic lenses. It's what most people are thinking when comparing a phone to a camera. Overall, it's big and clunky compared to a phone, so that makes it less likely that you're carrying it with you at all times. But then you might be dedicated or using a much smaller mirrorless camera like the Sony a7, so that doesn't rule it out. It just makes it more planned. For most people, a phone is always in a pocket. It's slower to upload. You need to take out the card and upload your editing suite first, then export it from there to the channel. But this allows for a more professional process and end result, so it's not to be sneezed at. It can't be a phone, that's true. Hello? Hello? Well, because to get the vast bulk of your shots to be professional and consistent, it's just gonna be much easier in the long run to use a camera. Apart from a handful of high profile directors using phones to make feature films, check out the trailer for Soderbergh's High Flying Bird that was made for Netflix, the filmmaking industry hasn't gone for filming on phones, despite all the benefits I've just outlined. Why is that? Are they crazy? No. Soderbergh is a legend and a risk taker, but even he hasn't switched to phones because it has a certain look and accessibility that suited his purpose for one film only. Getting the proper kit for the job is a step up for your production, and here are the differences. Number one, focus. Sounds familiar? It's impossible not to start with this because it's the most obvious difference when looking at the shots. Because a dedicated camera has interchangeable lenses, it means that you can choose lenses that have different focal lengths. Number two, storage. It's not unlimited, but storage is just not a problem with cards as high as one terabit that you can currently get. You can film all day if you want. Number three, exposure issues. The high dynamic range on DSLRs means less areas that look all white and blotchy, once you know the basics of exposing correctly. You'll also have flatter, more realistic colors compared to the bright candy colors of a phone. You might really like those really bright, oversaturated colors, but you'd be in the minority. If you want to know about choosing between green screen and real studio, check out this video here, or maybe check out this video all about the five minimum standards of production.